So in this video, I'm going to go over the review for test number two uh, from fall 2018. So this wasn't actually a test. It was a review for a test, but it had a lot of similar characteristics. So there's a lot of good practice on this one as well. All right. But you might find some of the questions here to be a little bit more elaborate than what you might find on the test. The first two questions were fact based, just like the last two videos. They just are, so I just denoted them there. Uh, so we're just going to jump right to number three. I took the liberty of typing that into the calculator already. So stat edit. <clears throat> All right. Since it's basically the third video doing the same thing, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm going to just kind of trim out. All right. In terms of instructions, just more like what what do you do, not so much how you do it. All right. So. Data is typed in, in theory, correctly. I'm just going to give it another quick look. What I'm going to do is stat, uh, let me quit out of here. Stat, calc, option one. Data is in L1 and L2. If not, make your calculator say that. And I'm just verifying that the end value is equal to one. All right, it says assume that the following is a probability distribution. So that makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about it not being. Uh, the mean is 2.89, and the standard deviation is equal to 1.476, if rounded correctly. Number four, a die is rolled seven times. What's the probability at least one of those rolls turns up a four? Two ways to handle this, again, is the table approach. So we could use, I'm going to, just jot down table approach and then I'm going to do the work on the calculator so you'll follow along with that stat edit we're rolling it seven times so that means we could have as many as seven successes so no success all the way up to seven successes let me wipe out what I have in L2 and we're talking about a die here. We want to know that the probability at least five of those rolls turns up a four. All right, so go right onto L2, hit enter, second VARS, binome PDF, seven trials, one in six chance of success, because again, it's a die, not a coin. All my possible successes are found in L1, hit enter. Now, in this case, I'm just looking for at least five. So that's five or more. All right, so five or more. All right, so I'm just going to do a quick copy-paste job here, just in case I screw this up. So I don't want the zeroth, first, second, third, or fourth. I only want the 5th, 6th, and 7th. So I'm just going to verify that that happened. So starting at 0 0.0019, 0 0.0001, and 4. Yep, okay, looks good. So then I'm going to quit out of here. I'm just going to jot down here that I'm looking for the probability of 5 successes or 6 or 7. I'm going to do second stat math five. The list I want to find the sum of is in is list three. I'm going to close it up and hit enter. And I'm going to get about, well, if I'm going three significant, it would still round to 0 0.002. All right. Now, if I'm using binome CDF, this is at least binome CDF does that most. All right, so what I would do first, if I want probability at least five, I would do one minus the probability of at most four. All right, so one minus binome CDF. Then I would type in the seven 
the one sixth and the four because that's our at most number. All right, so one minus second vars binome CDF seven comma one sixth comma four. And we get the same value. So we know we're in good shape. More than that, we know that we did it right. Oh, more than good shape. We did a, did a great job. Number five, an inspector samples a selection of 1500 CDs. The probability of defect is found to be 0.18. Assume that it's a binomial distribution. Determine if 75 defective CDs uh, would be considered unusual. All right, so I need the mean. Fifteen hundred times point one eight. Talking about two seventy. Square root of N P Q. Now Q is the same as one minus P. So fifteen hundred point one eight point eight two. Fourteen point well it would round to eight eight. So I need now mu plus or minus two sigma to give me my interval. So two seventy minus two times fourteen point eight eight. And then same thing just with a plus sign. So second enter to recall. And then second delete, and so delete the value, the, the minus sign, then second delete to insert the plus sign. So we're looking at 240. Oop, poor quality zero. 0.24, and then 299.76. These are our usuals. Therefore, 75 is unusual. It does not fall in that interval. It's not between the numbers 240-ish and 299-ish. All right. So first five questions in the books. Number six, uh, just like in the last video, these expected value questions, we save this for a tech assignment. We'll talk more about that after the second unit test. So that's tossed. Number seven, we want to know the probability of a person being in the marijuana category, given that they're in the 26 or older category. So our given is 26 or older. So that puts us in this column of the table. And all I care about are the marijuana users in that column. So we're looking at just jot it off on the side here. 1378 out of 2583. And that's that's it. Those contingency table questions are the easiest ones. All right. I mean, to come up with an answer. They're also very unforgiving if you screw it up. So take your time and be careful. Tree diagram or list of sample space for two tosses of a coin. All right, so coin one, heads, tails, coin two. For each one of those heads, we get a heads or tails, or for the heads, we get heads, tails. For the tails, we also get a heads, tails. Uh, followed by the roll of a die, so roll of a die so it's gonna get ugly so that's one of them then we gotta get 
six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they get very ugly very quickly, and so you just kind of do the best you can, All right? That's why I tend to want to go with a sample space, because then it's just a matter of listing out all the possible ways in which you can come up with the different outcomes, and that's really the end of it, All right? So in this case, it's heads, heads, so sample space, heads, heads, one, then heads, heads, two, three, four, five, and six. Then heads, tails. And same thing with tails, tails. And then finally after that, tails, heads. Definitely a little bit more organized. Handwriting is still crap, but it's a little bit more organized than the tree diagram, as you can see. I mean, look at the disaster on the left, and it's a little bit less disastrous on the right. But, um, but yeah, it, it does take a little doing. Number nine, three cards are selected at random from the following set without replacement. What's the probability that they're all clubs? Well, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards half of which are clubs, those are the black cards. So, seven out of 14. Then we're, we're selecting three of them without replacement. So, if I select one of them at random, then any of the six remaining cards would be clubs out of the 13 overall. And then if I select another one at random, any of the remaining five clubs would be possible out of the 12. So seven times six times five, We're talking 210, over 14 times 13 times 12. It's not a 12, 2184. And it would simplify somewhat. You know, not that not the most neighborly looking fraction in the world, but not a terrible one either. So uh, let me get rid of the equals because it's, it's either or. All right, expect the problem that's going to have to ask you to put your answer in fraction form, not decimal form. But I don't care what form your fraction is in. All right. Just like the last one, there's a bonus problem that we're going to toss because we're going to handle bonus differently in this course. And also the permutation question is out. So number 10, two cards are selected are random from the following set without replacement. What's the probability that they're all either clubs or threes? All right, so let's go through and take a look. So only two cards this time. Clubs, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a highlighter here. Here are my clubs. And I also want the threes. So instead of it being seven out of 14 now, it's gonna be eight out of 14. Cause eight, there's eight cards that are good to go. All right, so eight out of 14. And really this should say both. So once I select one of them, I only have seven left out of 13. So 56 
back over 14 times 13. Oh, 14 times 13 had the wrong key. Buck 82. Both even, so it'll reduce. Four out of 13. Last and final. How many events are in the sample space for nine rolls of a fair die? So number of outcomes for one roll, six. Number of rolls, nine. Then three flips of a fair coin. Number of outcomes for one flip, two. Number of flips, three. So six to the ninth times two to the third. And we're looking at this monstrosity. Eight, zero, six, two, one, five, six, eight. All right. So never would consider drawing a tree diagram or listing a sample space for this particular set of outcomes. And there it is.